Greetings and welcome to Vanderbilt University School of Nursing's Informatics 101. I'm Patty Sengstack and I'm the director of the master's program in nursing informatics. And I'm Alvin Jeffrey. I'm a postdoc fellow with the Department of Veterans Affairs and on faculty here at Vanderbilt in the School of Nursing. And I'm Betsy Weiner. I'm the Senior Associate Dean for Informatics here at the School of Nursing. Welcome. So today, we're going to tackle the question, what are some of the career trajectories that someone in the field of nursing informatics could take? So we know that um, they're similar to the field of nursing itself. We know that there are a lot of different specialties, even within the field of informatics, I believe there are some specialties as well. One of the questions I would like to start with, though, before we dive into that is, how long has nursing informatics been around? Well, nursing informatics was recognized as a specialty back in 1992, but it actually existed prior to that. If you think of the 60s and 70s, there were mainframes around. It wasn't really until the 80s that you started to see nursing informatics pop up in various places. It wasn't exactly called that, but I would say the article by Graves and Corcoran in 89 really was a landmark article because it established that data to information to knowledge that became the foundation for what nursing informatics was going to be. Judith Graves would tell you when she did her postdoc at the National Library of Medicine, she was still walking around with index cards. <laughs> And that if we wanted to have a foundation for what our understanding of uh, nursing science was all about, that we had to have some knowledge base building, and informatics was going to provide that foundation. Mm. Yeah, there were, there were nurses working in the field of informatics before it was even called yes. informatics. We just didn't know that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. I was around then. You <laughs> well... I was on a phone call with Bonnie Wester yesterday, who mm -hmm. is one of our key informatics leaders in the field, and, and she said one of the first data sci nursing data scientists was Florence Nightingale, because she took data, got information Absolutely. out of it, and did visualizations. Now, the technology was a little bit different when Florence was a nurse, but in some ways you, can, you could really trace a lot of the roots and the foundations back quite a ways, and you weren't around when Florence Not when time. Florence was. <laughs> So Some days it feels like it. <laughs> I think that was in the 1850s, wasn't it? When she was... Um, the Crimean War. The Crimean mm -hmm. War, when she was helping to improve sanitation um, in the military hospital mm -hmm. there. So there have been informatics nurses since the 1850s. Now, okay, now it's 2019. Would you say that nursing informatics is a mainstream and well-known specialty in nursing? You know, I was actually, I was, on the, yeah, I was on the phone yesterday with someone who was applying for a nurse practitioner program, uh, but wasn't sure she wanted to commit to it. And I was asking and trying to get an idea of what she was interested in as she advanced her education. And it was really clear to me, and I think this is probably true for a lot of nurses practicing at the bedside, that they know what a nurse practitioner does. That's very mm -hmm. mainstream. That's very clear. That's very well recognized. They work with nurse practitioners. When we start moving into slightly more abstract fields of education, leadership, research, informatics being one of those, I think it, it's a little too ambiguous to call it mainstream at this point. And a lot of people don't know what it would mean. I think, unfortunately, it's still a sell job for us to convince people what nursing informatics is and what it can do for them. We have had a number of second degree students who have come to us because they never thought the enticement to become a nurse was there. They had an interest in technology, mm. didn't know it could turn into informatics, but wow, they've become second degree students and now are contributing nurses. So we're happy to take them. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Maybe we should share what we each do, because I think that uh, while the three of us are all nurse informaticists, we all do something really very different in the field. Do you want to start, out? I was or? actually going to ask you to start, Patty. You You've start? been asking all the hard questions. So we're <laughs> Back to you. And I okay. think you're more embedded in the clinical practice yes. side, so you're a good start. So I have the fortune of having a joint appointment. So I, on the academic side here at the School of Nursing, I teach nursing informatics at the master's and the doctoral level. And 
on the practice side, I'm the nursing informatics executive for the uh, Vanderbilt University Medical Center. So in that role, I'm working as a leader to help plan strategies around nurses' use of the system, helping it to support workflow. Recently, we've created some structure and some governance around um, when do we add things to the um, electronic health record? You know, when do we add new documentation fields? When do we change some things around? When do we add modules? So looking at how does technology in the medical center support nurses and then support patient care? So it's really nice because I get to practice what I teach. And I get to teach what I practice. It's really very nice. And what did you do before you started that role? Here? No, so, well, you had some leadership positions higher. Yeah, so too, right? um, I was, before I came here, I was the chief nursing informatics officer for the Bon Secours Health System. So there were 14 hospitals up and down the East Coast. Um, and then prior to that, I was the deputy CIO and chief of clinical informatics at the uh, NIH Clinical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. So I've been in the field 20 years, and I, I love to be in that the hands-on side of it. I like to be where I see the nurses interacting with the system, um, making improvements to that, getting them to the point that they've got a system that's actually supporting care and the system is working for them rather than them working for the system. Cool. So how about you? Uh, well, you know, sometimes I don't even call myself an informaticist. I feel like I don't... Uh... I never did the clinical informatics work, and so sometimes people talk, and I think, "Am I part of the club or not?" Uh, of I, I think you I are. am. Okay, you thank are. you. <laughs> uh, but I, I do the research side. So for and I didn't when I started my PhD, I didn't know I was into informatics. I always loved technology. I loved math, and I found that there was a spot for that in informatics. Uh, that you can, as I say all the time, work with data. And how do we get information out of data? Doing the, the statistics and the analytics and finding these patterns and trends. Uh, I almost don't think of it as a job. I just have so much fun doing these analytics sort of things. And so for me, my uh, career in informatics is writing papers, giving talks, and making discoveries and all of the data that nurses put into the electronic health record and think about how we create interventions that could influence nursing care delivery as well as the uh, care delivery of other clinicians. But I'm a little earlier in my career, so I, I could take a whole lot of other directions at this point, too. I believe you referred to yourself earlier as the data geek. Works for me. Yeah. Can I get a name tag for that? <laughs> but you know, data and analytics is a huge part of informatics. So, yes, of course, you're a member of the club. Thanks. <laughs> And I'm an educational informaticist. I've spent 40 years on the education side always with technology. I'm also a multimedia developer, having started in the early 80s. I felt like that sometimes there were better ways of learning rather than just putting a beginning student into a room with a patient and, and hope that they could remember what they knew from the healthy side of care to the acute care needs that they had. So in my role here as Senior Associate Dean of Informatics, I'm in charge of, of a 28-member support team where we design all of the technology applications that our students use so that we promote the best learning, whether it's at the pre-specialty level or in any of our doctoral student work or nurse practitioner student work. Um, I clearly have a dream team that works with me because we have everything from academic instructional designers, to graphic designers, to programmers, to networking people. And to if the team that's videoing us now. Yes, and, and videographers. <laughs> how can I, I leave them out? It, it's just so much fun to interact with them on a daily basis and problem solve and know that we turn out students, uh, regardless of whether informatics is their major, that have the strongest informatics practices behind what it is that they're learning. So I've gotten lots of joy out of doing that, and I've done it for 40 years now. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I, I love where an informatics career can take you. I think this is exciting and inspiring. As I think about the people that might be watching this episode, they're probably the people that are thinking about starting a master's degree. And 
you wouldn't take your position or your position fresh out of a master's degree. So what are the other sorts of roles that someone thinking about this program might have right out of the program? What would it prepare them for? What's the current job market mm -hmm. like? Do you want to start or do you want me to? Why don't you this? start about the HEMS, okay. HEMS data, and then I have some data about our graduates. Oh, excellent. So um, what I have is, so the Healthcare Information and Management Systems Society, or HEMS as we call it, every few years they do what's called a Nursing Informatics Workforce Survey. And they did one in 2017, and they had uh, 1,279 respondents. So some of the data from that that um, they share in that document um, says that the majority of respondents, actually 80% of them, were satisfied or highly satisfied with their career choice in informatics. Um, and if you look at one of the graphs that they provide, talks about nursing informatics job titles. And nursing informatics specialist is the top job title, which I see mm. typically as kind of the title that you're given um, as a newer informatics nurse. Um, there's other titles, and there really is no standard title for someone in this role. You know, is there a standard job description either? No, no, no standard job description either. But you'll see titles like clinical analyst, um, a clinical informatics specialist, uh, nurse educator or instructor. You'll see application analyst, uh, a clinical application specialist, associate professor, professor, project manager, um, uh, those, those that have gone higher up in the, uh, the field could be something like a director of clinical informatics or a chief nursing informatics officer. Some of our graduates have very similar titles to what you describe. Uh, clinical nurse informaticist, perioperative system support, systems analyst, senior director health information intelligence. I love that title. Say that one again. Senior Director Health Information Intelligence oh, at Tenet Healthcare. Fancy. Mm -hmm. That is a fancy one. Uh, senior Domain Specialist. I like that one. Data Platform Solution Architect, uh, CEO. Oh. Manager of Patient Care Services, Research Nurse Specialist. You get the idea. Yeah. And in some of these positions, our informatics nurses are more behind the scenes than they're actually right there at the bedside. So sometimes people don't realize that nurse informaticists have helped to shape the care that they're getting, but aren't necessarily the ones that they'll be writing up to say, thank you for the care you gave me today. Right, right. It's like the foundation uh, that underlies so much of practice and supports it, and without it, couldn't deliver the care and provide the human touch that nurses love providing. Well, I remember one of our student applications spoke to the fact that it's one thing to be able to change things one at a time as a bedside nurse, but the capability of being able to look at systems and make system-wide suggestions mm -hmm. and changes, evaluation, and all of those things gave them great satisfaction. Yeah, the, the, the breadth of a potential impact um, is much greater um, in an informatics role. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not just touching the life of one patient during the course of your shift. You're touching the lives of every nurse in your facility and the patients that they're, they're taking care of. Mm -hmm. so it's and I think it's beyond facilities now, too. We hear more and more about population health informatics yes. and the role of being out in the community. And I think there's definitely a groundswell of people interested in getting outside of the walls of the hospital. And that is a huge area of growth and need right now, I think, in the field. I, I agree. We are starting to see that. Um, you know, technology has expanded outside the walls of the hospital, and now, you know, there are electronic health records and many other technologies in ambulatory settings and urgent care settings and home health um, and skilled nursing facilities, and all of that technology needs people to help to support it. And all the consumer health care applications uh, that are now being used and... right. We need to implement right. them and integrate them with right. what we're doing as well. It's right. important. Right. Yet, an, yet another field in, in informatics, you know, the, the patient engagement, having patients use the yes. technology to improve their care. We're seeing so much of that with all of the mobile devices, you know, the Fitbits and the, you know, the different trackers, the step trackers that we see. Um, one of the other um, uh, slides or graphs that the HIMSS survey shared was, um, nursing informatics job responsibilities. So what do you what do nurses nurse informaticists do? So this was uh, the respondents shared that 
the majority of them have some kind of a role in system implementation. So, you know, it's, I found that interesting because um, so many hospitals already have a system implemented, mm -hmm. but it's still happening and there's big upgrades, so there's a lot of work in that area. Um, as well as system development, there are nurses that do a lot of the, the, the build in an organization to create new documents for nurses. Clinical analytics, which is right in your area of data, quality initiatives and reporting, um, education, um, uh, regulatory initiatives, making improvements based on regulatory changes um, at the federal level or from organizations like the Joint Commission. So I really, I think that the, um, I think that it's, you know, sometimes I don't even know how many roles are out there for nursing informatics. I don't know that anybody really knows, but I think that that's what makes it kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. And one thing that our program is going to be doing in its revised format that we talked about in our strategy meeting recently is helping graduate or soon to be graduates once they're at the end develop job descriptions. How do you write a job description for yourself knowing that mm -hmm. your executive might not know exactly what you're capable of and what you can do? So we really want to support our students in that and help them think about future opportunities and advanced degrees. Uh, so I think we need to wrap up. Uh, and so my key takeaways on these points in addition to the 150 job titles and responsibilities we probably pulled out in a few minutes, that there are clinical possibilities, there are academic possibilities, and clinical being in or out of the hospital. Informaticists can practice, teach, research, develop, manage, and that there's a need for jobs right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a great, it's a growing field and there's a big need for it. So I want to take one last opportunity to thank Dr. Weiner for joining us. We're happy to have you. And thank you all for listening in. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, listening to us and sharing uh, these episodes with your colleagues and friends, whether through social media or in email. If you have comments, questions, or suggestions, uh, please send them to the address uh, below. And until next time. Mm -hmm.